Are you tired of Roblox's archaic method of launching projectiles? The laggy body movers and inconsistent hit detection? This is an issue that plagues many inexperienced game devs as most have not attempted the dabble in math and physics, an essential skill of the modern game developer. In this video, I'll introduce you to an implementation of kinematics so that you can create the most accurate and lag-free projectile possible on Roblox. Hey guys, welcome back to my newest video where I'm going to be showing you how to make physically accurate projectiles that are efficient and aren't affected by server lag. These projectiles can be used to make clean and smooth hit detection for your games that doesn't have to rely on Roblox's inconsistent physics. Let's have a go. First up, we have our regular projectile, which just throws like this. As you can see, it has a nice curve and nothing too fancy. We have our low gravity projectile, which has half the gravity of the regular projectile. And we have our windy projectile, which follows the wind as it blows that way. As you can see, everything here is fully customizable because it's based on physics rather than something that's pre-made for you in Roblox. Now, you may have seen a module called, I believe, FastCast, and this essentially does the same thing, but I'm gonna be teaching you how to write it yourself because you can't always rely on other people's modules. However, if you don't want to watch this tutorial for some reason, check out FastCast. Uh, I'll probably put it in the description. They did it first, you know, so this is going to be a very rudimentary version of FastCast without all the cool features like client replication and error logging. So first, let's get started with how the physics actually work. So in order to understand this video, you're going to need to have a bit of a simple understanding of science so you're going to need to know what a vector is and some some of that some of that jazz now now i do recommend this youtube tutor guy by the name of professor dave explains um this he's pretty much where i learned all this uh so i do highly recommend checking out his videos on physics i'll have a link to those in the description um, but I'll teach you the very basics that you need to know about projectiles. So, first of all, we need to separate X and Y movement. So let's draw our axis right here. Okay, so now that our axis is drawn, I also have to say that first we have to learn how to do this in 2D because once you understand how it works in 2D, it becomes very easy to kind of apply it to three dimensions. So. X and Y move separately because if you think about it, why would the up and down motion of an object affect how far it moves side to side? Like, for example, if we had a ball rolling this way at like seven newtons of force and we had a ball that's falling this way, assuming they're at the same position and it's the same ball, it's falling this way with a downwards force of four newtons and a horizontal force of seven newtons these both are going to travel the same distance and probably end up somewhere like here regardless of how far it falls because it the upwards motion does not affect how far it travels horizontally and this works exactly the same with the vertical motion now professor dave uses a great example if you have a table this looks like a stick figure but it's a table and you have a ball. If you roll this ball off the table and it drops and you drop this ball, this ball, at the same time that this rolls off the table, theoretically, they both hit the ground at the same time. Even though this one has a little bit of horizontal motion, they will still hit the ground at the same time because horizontal motion does not affect vertical motion. So, that means we're going to have two different equations uh, representing our motion. Because normally when you think of a projectile motion, you think of a parabola, which if you don't know, the, the root function of a parabola, parabola is y equals x squared, which is a quadratic equation. Uh, basically it looks something like this. And if you flip it upside down and you move it this way, 
projectile would normally look like this, right? This is pretty much just a parabola. Um, but in this case, we're going to have two equations. So our first equation, um, or really, we're only going to have one equation that's repeated twice. So we have to define some variables here. So first, we're going to have a variable called vi, which is the initial velocity. And we're going to have a variable called t, which is the amount of time elapsed. And we have a variable called a, which is the acceleration. So let me explain these. Initial velocity is how fast our projectile is moving at the moment that you launch it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is. Time is how much time in seconds um, has elapsed since we launched our projectile. And acceleration is how much that this velocity is going to change relative to how much time we've spent. So one of the kinematic equations would be velocity at a certain time is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Now, if you think about it, our acceleration times time is basically saying, let's say our acceleration is 10. So we're going to move 10 meters per second faster every second. And we multiply that by how many seconds has elapsed. And we just add that onto our base. So if our base is equal to 10 and our time is equal to two and our acceleration is equal to 10, then 10 plus 10 times two, which is 30. So our, our velocity at this time will be equal to 30. Uh, hopefully that explains it well enough. Okay, so I messed up on the equation the first time I explained it. So I'm gonna have part of my initial explanation where I explained some basic stuff, plus this little simulation that I found online that I think is really useful. Um, so sorry that the first part is in Photoshop, but whatever. So our equation is this. And so basically what this means is that your position at any given time is your initial position plus your velocity times the amount of time elapsed uh, plus 0.5 at squared. Let's say your acceleration is zero, which it will be for our horizontal movement because we're not having like air or anything. That means your position at any given time is simply your initial position plus your velocity times the amount of elapsed time, which if you think about it, your velocity is uh, basically just how far you move per second. So we're multiplying that by how many seconds is just how far your total movement is. And if you have that 0.5 AT squared, it just accounts for acceleration. So it, your velocity will change over the course of time. For example, with our gravity here, acceleration due to gravity, as you can see, 9.8, it'll shoot out like that as time goes on. But if we set our acceleration to zero, which is no gravity, it just goes straight up. Now there is some like trigonometry like things that I didn't really get into uh, just because it's not really relevant to Roblox because it already gives us the strength or the length of the X component of the vector and the Y component of the vector. So it's like, it doesn't really matter that we know the launch angle like we don't need to know the launch angle in our case. But um, I do highly recommend watching Professor Dave's explanation because he'll go way more in depth than I will because I'm not like a physicist or whatever you call it. So um, watch those videos if you really want to understand. Let's just say that those videos are a prerequisite for watching this video and I'm simply reviewing what you've already learned, okay? So here I have a kind of just a template place that I already set up. It just has a tool that fires a remote event. It's, I'm not here to teach you how to use tools, so that's not what we're gonna do. Well, uh, we're gonna start off by making this a module because modules are the best. So I'm just gonna add a modules folder. And inside of it, I'm going to add a module script and this one's going to be called projectile. 
for the sake of organization, we're gonna call this projectile as well. So first off, I'm just gonna start by adding in run surface and debris, two variables. Just two things that we need for this. We're gonna start by making this an object uh, because we love our object-oriented programming. So function projectile dot new and local new projectile. Now, what properties do we want our projectile to have? Well, in my opinion, to, in order to make this fully customizable, we want the gravity. We want a whitelist of objects that it is able to hit. A, we want a vector describing the wind at the place of the projectile. And just for some extra customization, I'm going to add a despawn time and I'm going to add visualization in case you're one of those people. So just add these properties into our projectile, shall we? Now, I don't really like this whitelist. I'm just gonna make it uh, raycast params so that we always have our raycast params ready. So, cause we're gonna be using raycasting if you didn't know already. So we have our projectiles pretty much set up and all, all that's left to do is write the cast function. So we're going to write our function in here because we want it to be a part of our new projectile object. So function new projectile cast and we want a start which is our starting point and our ending point which I'm just going to call destination and our force. So if you can recall our little physics lesson, we have our starting point. This is given. Um, destination is kind of like a Roblox thing. I'm making it so that it's the difference of start and destination is the vector. And it'll be the length of force. So it'll be kind of a vector that starts at start and points towards destination. That way we have kind of a direction for our object to move so um, let's let's just paste our equation in so now that we have our equations let's start the cast first we need the initial movement vector which is our starting force so what we're trying to do here is we want to get a vector that starts at point a and points towards point b with a length of force so how are we going to do that um let's see local Let's, let's call it V-force. Uh, it's just the vector, like, force, I guess. Equal to destination minus start uh, dot unit times force. So in this case, our inputs are a vector 3, a vector 3, and an integer. Or this doesn't have to be an integer. But what we're doing is we're getting destination minus start is basically just a vector from start to finish. Um... It's just a line from point A to B, you could say, dot unit. So we're what we're doing is we're taking that vector and we're shortening it down to a length of one and then multiplying it by force. So obviously one times force is just force. Therefore, the length of our vector will be force. Now, what I will say is that the way that this, is, this works is that Roblox doesn't actually count in meters. It counts in studs, which is a little weird. But if we go to workspace, we can see that workspace gravity is 196.2 and real gravity is negative 9.8. So if we want to do like local conversion is equal to this divided by 9.8. That's basically just the conversion from Roblox studs to, to meters, which is what we're actually trying to replicate because that'll be more accurate to real life. So if we just print... Uh, this divided by 9.8 gives us about 20. So times conversion is gives us a vector in the length of meters. Now next, we want to find our A value, our, our acceleration, how much we want our vector to change over time. So our A value, just going to call it A is equal to vector 3 dot new. And then if you know anything about object-oriented programming, you know we can access these variables from inside... Uh, by doing self dot wind dot x so our acceleration will just change by how fast the wind's moving in this direction dot y 
self.win.z. And X and Z are already fine because this is our horizontal movement. In this case, we have two horizontal movements, but it really, it works exactly the same as 2D motion. It's just that it's 3D, like it, it, you just add an extra layer, but this layer Z behaves exactly the same as X. So you don't have to worry about anything. Now we have to account for gravity. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do minus 9.8, which is the speed of gravity times our conversion. Now we did have a gravity thing here. Now I want this to be like, if you enter one as their gravity, that's just the default gravity. If you enter two, that's two times gravity. If you enter three, three times gravity. If you enter 0 0.5, that's half gravity. So in this case, we're just normalizing it to fit into 9.8 or whatever. So we're just going to do self dot gravity times this. Um, that'll let us control how much gravity we want. Now, one thing I forgot to say was that you also have to, dang, you have to multiply these by conversion as well. Um, like this, but, uh, actually I'm just going to do this on the outside because that way it looks better times conversion. There we go. There is our acceleration. So now we get into the actual Roblox stuff. This, this part gets a, like less theoretical. Uh, first we have to get our time, which is zero. Get our starting position, which is going to be start. We're going to get a pre-made variable for our ray result because we're going to be finding this by ray casting. And we're just going to find, we're just going to use a simple Boolean. So to help us break out of the loop, so we don't have some kind of infinite loop. And we're gonna uh, write our connection, which is going to be run service dot heartbeat with, with our delta time, which is how much time happens in between each frame. We're going to wait until found is true. So while not found do wait. We're just going to wait until it's found something. It's not necessarily going to find something. It's just going to wait until we want to exit out of our connection. And then we're going to disconnect this. So connection disconnect. And we're going to parse our ray. So if ray result, then print. Um, Detected. Um, so now this is kind of the tricky part. We're gonna write our we're gonna write our projectile. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're going to add dt because obviously every single frame our time variable is gonna keep changing, and it's going to keep changing by this amount. This is the, the amount of time that happens between each frame. Now here's the part where our equation comes into play. We're going to project our next position. Um, so what we're gonna do is local project pause is equal to vector three dot new, uh, and it's going to have three uh, pretty long things. So if you remember our equation, PT equals whatever. So let's just actually just copy this. Well, our initial position is going to be start dot x our initial velocity is going to be v force dot x and our acceleration all we have to do is a dot x uh pr simple enough we actually can just write exactly the same thing for y and z that's where our projectile is going to appear um every single frame it's going to appear in a different place and then all we're going to do is just cast a ray so uh, I'm not going to explain how ray casting works. That hopefully is a prerequisite of watching this video. Uh, something you already know how to do ray casting. So then we're going to update our current pause to be our projected pause because we want the projectile to keep moving forward instead of staying at the place, the same place the whole time. Uh, that way we'll kind of get a series of dots. Uh, all we're going to do is check if we can exit. So if ray result or t is greater than self dot what is it despawn time so it, 
if we found something or our projectile can despawn, then we're just gonna exit. Okay, and that'll be it. Uh, let's just go configure our little tool here. I already have it all written out. This shouldn't be too hard to write. It's just a simple remote event. Here though, we're creating our projectile object and let's actually just create it. Um, our projectile object. Let's see what constructors it has. It has gravity. We want default gravity. Whitelist. Uh, I have a model set up here, uh, including these, the base plate and these two parts. This is just our map geometry, I guess. So we're just gonna uh, get these. So workspace map get children. That'll be our things that we can hit. Next up is wind. We don't want any wind, so vector three dot new zero zero zero. Um, despawn time. Let's say let's give it three seconds. And visualize. Um, let's just actually let's give it true for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm going to quickly write some visualization code. It doesn't, you don't, this, it's not going to be part of the tutorial because it's pretty easy. I'm just going to write it. So there's just our quick visualization. All it's going to do is make a part and then destroy it. It's pretty inefficient uh, to keep making and destroying parts on the server. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because it's just for the sake of the tutorial. Uh, I'm just gonna make one hit at the ray result position and make this one a little bigger so we can actually see that we hit something. And um, now we have to enter our cast parameters. So here we have a remote event that will fire our mouse's position. It's actually a C-frame, mouse.hit. It fires the C-frame of our mouse um, to the server. So we want our start position, which will just be our tools handle. Um, so handle dot position. Our end position will be our hit. So hit dot position. And our force. We can change this to whatever we want. I'm gonna go 50. That might be a little too high. Something I forgot to do, by the way, is that in this little script, we just wanna check uh, if not found then. Is that right? Oh, no, no, no. In the, in the connection, in the connection. Uh, sorry about that. Just a little mistake. Basically, because uh, our heartbeat is going to execute faster than this code. So even if we found something, it'll still keep looking. And so if it doesn't find a part in the next ray, then it'll overwrite our initial ray result with nil. So it won't exist. So there we go. Go to first person. We can throw it up in the air. 50 was a bit high for the force. You know, let's go with like 10. So, um, so our projectile. And just like that. Pretty realistic, huh? Now, you can edit it to do many different things. This is completely customizable. So let's say you don't want your projectile to curve, you know, that's, maybe it's a little bit too realistic for your game. You're looking for something more stylized. You want a straight moving projectile. Well, no need to worry. All you have to do is change your gravity to zero and it'll move in a linear line. Pretty cool. Now let's add our gravity back. Let's say maybe you're in like a windy part of the map, you know, let's Let's have our wind blow our projectile. And if for some reason it's a very windy day, they're not having a good day outside. Just crank this way up just so you can see it clearer. It's, it's, it's curving a lot now because we turned our wind super high. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. We can set our gravity really low. So let's say you, you're going for like a really low gravity. Like, let's say you're throwing a rock on the moon. You know, people do that all the time. Well, look at how much further that went because of low gravity.
So yeah, pretty cool. We all we did this with math. Isn't that cool? Learn your math. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit messy, but I think it probably got the point across pretty well. Uh, sorry that I kind of assumed that you knew everything already. Uh, this is kind of an advanced tutorial. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, peace.